How dare you in my own home? Oh, what do you hear? What do you say? Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to the studios of the Old Bakery as we get ready to give you another exciting week here at In Your House Weekly. I am, as always, your host, Mr. Luke Jennings, hoping the podcast is finding you fine and dandy here in the middle of August. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button here if you haven't already on our home, the place to be wrestling network. Home of great shows such as Who's Next with This Ring, PTB Weekend Special, PTBN's Men Event, Wrestle Tracks, and so many other great shows, including everything coming to you from the old Bakery Productions. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at PTBN Wrestling. You can find them on all good podcast suppliers as well as you will do our sister network, the North South Connection. Bringing you such great shows as Row One, Seat One, Wrestling Warzone, The Jenny Position, Hail to the Keith, Cronoso, Alakata Keithy, Extreme Throw Dance, and so many other great shows covering a whole range of wrestling and non wrestling topics. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at No So Pod Network. Also, find our cousin, the Backbone Wrestling Network. Bringing you such great shows as New Gen on a Mission, Ruthless Regression, Highway to the Impact Zone, Territorial, Cross Up, The Shit Take, and more. You can find them on all good podcast suppliers, as well as net, as well on Twitter, at Backbone24. That's back, all one word, Backbone, and number 24. You'll also find us, Old Bakery Productions Network, on all good podcast suppliers. It's just a little bit easier to archive everything in there. So if you want to listen to an old episode of In Your House, if you want to listen to an old episode of Pure Wrestling Passion, Memphis Continent Wrestling Cast, Hamburg All Stars, Monday Night Project or any of the other little things I've done you can go and find it there it's a little bit easier than having to trawl all the way through the place to be wrestling network that is Old Bakery Productions Network available on all good podcast suppliers when you've found a podcast to listen to then you can uh, have a little look online at whenitwascool.com for more podcasts articles and much more on retro pop culture comics wrestling movies TV toys history and more and then when you want to know a bit, a little bit about wrestling you can visit thehistoryofwwe.com for all uh, information and sort of little uh, titbits of things. You can look at Ring of Honor, TNA, uh, WCW slash NWA, WCW Smoky Mountain, WWF, WWF, WWE, you name it, Richard and Graham have got you covered over there. This week we're covering In Your House 15 from May the 11th, be with you, 1997. Just a quick note, next week... Is in your house 16, Canadian Stampede, an infamous um, in your house. It was an infamous pay per view, really. Um, then, after, then the week after that, in your house Ground Zero, one, they changed their name. So instead of being in your house Ground Zero, it's Ground Zero in your house. But that's fine. Two, they go to three hours. So next week's the last two hour show. Which means next week will be the last time we cover an In Your House in full. I'm not going to be sitting here, no offence to anyone who's listening, because I know you all enjoy my stuff, but I'm not sitting here talking to myself for nearly three hours. So I'm going to be covering um, three matches, probably at at best. Um, Let me just have a quick look at the card for Ground Zero, and I'll give you an example. Where are you? So, in your house, ground zero is there. So, um, I'll run through the card and I'll give you an example of, of matches we won't be covering. So, the card is Brian Pillman versus Goldust, Scott Putzky versus Brian Christopher, Savio Vega versus Crush versus Farouk, Max Mini versus El Torito, The Godwins versus The Headbangers versus The Legion of Doom versus The Hart Foundation, Bret Hart versus The Patriot, Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. I'm not going to be sitting here covering Scott Putzky versus Brian Christopher. That's for fucking damn sure. <laughs> so, for a ground zero, I will probably start the event at the uh, four-way tag match. And I'll cover that, the world title, and then uh, Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. Uh, Bad Blood, the month after, I will be covering Hell in a Cell for sure. Um, so, I'll probably cover... 
Um, there's a, I'll probably cover the, yeah, there's three matches on there that I'll cover. So, yeah, it'll now, so from then on, it'll be three matches uh, tops, unless there's a, I, unless I can see that there's going to be a decent sort of fourth match, but it'll be two to three matches. Sim- if you listen to, if you've ever listened to Monday Night Project, whenever I covered pay-per-views there, I only cover two or three matches, depending on the length of the match. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be sitting, like I said, I'm not going to be sitting here. No offence to anyone listening, because I know you're in. I enjoy doing this, but I don't want to be sitting here um, watching three hours of stuff. So that's going to be that. So where were we? So this, like I said, this week we're covering your house 15 from May the 11th, 1997. Last week we covered your house 14, where we saw Dusty Finishes, Fire, Rockabilly, Brett versus Austin, as well as the usual awesomeness from the 1997 WWF before we head down to ringside to see what we've got in store. Let's have a look now. There's no WCW pay-per-views, and in canon, In Your House 14 only happened three weeks ago, so not a lot happens between these shows. But what I can tell you is on the 3rd of May, New Japan Pro Wrestling have a show, Strong Stru- strong Style Evolution, in Osaka, Japan, in the Osaka Dome, drawing 43,000. They've got a hell of a card here, as they've got Koji K. Muta, Shinji Otani, Dick Togo, Men's Taro, and Hanzo Nakajima, defeating Super Dolphin, Gran Hamada, the great Sasuke, El Samurai, and Nori Honaga. They've got... Uh, Tatsumi Fujinami defeating Hiro- Hiro- Hiroyoshi Tenzon. They've got Endeavor Sting and Six defeating Tadua Yoshida and Takashi Izuki. Buff Bagwan Scott Norton defeating Lex Luger and the Giant. Kevin Nash, Scott Hall and Masahiro Chono defeating Keiji Muto and the Steiner Brothers. Antonio Inoki and Tiger King, who I believe is the original Tiger Mask, defeat Jushin Liger and Yoshiyaki Fujiwara. Satoshi Kojima and Manubu Nakanashi defeat Ricky Choshu and Ken Suki Sazaki to win the IWGP Tag Team Titles. And in the main event, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Shinya Hashimoto defeats Nagoya Agawa. On the 10th of May 1997, ECW hold their Chapter 2 program or event in the Philadelphia uh, Arena. 1,100 are in attendance and they are watching Shane Douglas and Bam Bam Bigelow defeat the Pipples. Axel Rotten defeats Chris Chetty. Tracy Smothers and Little Guido defeat Spike Dudley and Bulls Mahoney. ECW Tag Team Champions The Eliminators defeat PG-13 in a, what I believe is quite a good match from what I've heard. I think that's a pretty decent match. Uh, Tommy Dreamer defeats Luis Bacoli. Big Dick and Devon Dudley beat the Gangsters. Taz and Chris Candido defeat Sabu and Rob Van Dam. ECW World Champion Terry Funk defeats Raven, Sandman and Stevie Richards. So that's that for there. Uh, and then, like we said, in our little world. So the Raw before this was last week, episode 208. It is la, la, live from Ashwobin, 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 Wisconsin. <coughs> The Brown County Veterans Memorial Arena, 3,363 in attendance. That seems like a quite a small crowd for a Monday Night Raw. Uh, it's just a 3.2. They've got uh, Rockabilly defeating Ahmed Johnson, Vader defeating Goldust, Ahmed Johnson defeating Adam O'Brien, Chris Steele and Crush. Uh, Doug Ferris and Philip LaFond defeat the Legion of Doom. Steve Austin defeats the British Bulldog. And then on the other side of the world, WCW, we've got the 86th episode of Monday Night Show. There's a 2.8 uh, live from Lakeland, Florida in the Jenkins Arena. Uh, they have got quite a lot of dark matches. Holy shit. Two, four, five, six dark matches. Holy moly. Uh, but on the main card, they've got Hugh Morris and Conan defeating the public enemy. Six they successfully defending the WCW World Cruiserweight title by defeating Rey Mysterio in 54 seconds. I'm guessing something happens there. Good Jesus. How long is this show? My God, that is... Dude, right, so something happens. Okay, right, okay, so something happens. I'll read the comments in a bit. So, the Hugh Morris, the tag match between Hugh Morris and Conan defeating the Public Enemy, 3 minutes 39. Six defeats Rey Mysterio... 54 seconds. Lord Stephen Regal versus Meng, no contest, 30 seconds. Jeff Jarrett defeats Alex Wright, 1 minute 26 seconds. The main event, 
Glacier defeats Liz Muck Jr. 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, so pretty unremarkable. It really wasn't hard to fit everything into an hour before. Why can't you do it now? So I'm guessing for some reason they're on an hour instead of two. Uh, not one big match for this card to feel important. Another bad show due to time constraints. So I'm guessing maybe base. Base? What the fuck is going on? Uh, I'm guessing maybe baseball, maybe, man, when are we? No, if it is baseball, it's a very early baseball game in May. M NBA, maybe? Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, another bad show due to time constraints. Public game versus Dungeon of Doom was fun, hardcore bash, then everything goes to crap. Matches don't go past two minutes and no time to get into them. It's going to be over soon. I'll just have to wait. It's going to be over soon. Oh, okay. Terrible episode of Nitro. Everything feels so rushed. Five matches with one short match and four matches that don't even last a minute. The promos aren't really good this time. I like the NWA takeover at the end, but it ends there. I think a couple of things were wasted, like Grey Mysterio destroyed in a minute or missing the main event. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't get a very good... It doesn't really get a good... Um... Yeah, I wonder what that is. Is that... I'm going to quickly have a look. Uh, NBA 1996. Seven. I'm guessing there's a game one, maybe. What do they say? The fifth. The fifth. May the fifth be with you. The only game that is on is the Rock the Houston Rockets versus the Seattle Supersonics. That's like one of the first games of the conference semi-finals. Houston win 112 to 102. But that wouldn't be on TNT, would it? The Bulls play the next night. Uh, there's no baseball, is there? It's baseball's... Is there an Atlanta Braves game? Atlanta Braves, 1997. 1997. There is a... Let's have a look. Uh, go away. Schedule results. What did we say? May the 5th, the... They're at Seattle. Is that Seattle? SEL? I think they're St. Louis. They're at St. Louis. So the Atlanta Braves are at St. Louis. Uh, I can't understand what any of this is. Uh, box score, that might help. Braves win 2-1 to one to go 22-8 and eight in the season. That's at, that's at Atlanta. No, Bush Stadium is. Uh, you have to forgive me where Bush Stadium is. Bush Stadium. Bush. So that's, that's at St. Louis. Yeah, I've got no idea why that is such a shitty nitro. Anywho, that leads us on to in your house a cold day in hell. We are going to be live from the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. We're going to be in front of 9,381 people and we are doing a 0.57 buy rate. We missed the free for all match of a rematch from last month, Rockabilly versus Jesse James. There's also a uh, rematch of sorts um, for the dark match at the end of the card, leading the Doom versus Owen H defeat Owen Hart and the British Bulldog by disqualification. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's get down to it. <coughs> We're going to be seeing an in-ring debut, we're going to be seeing a gauntlet match, we're going to be seeing a world title match, and then a couple of matches that eh, probably aren't going to be great, but we'll get through them. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, so this is episode 15 of In Your House Weekly. Only 12 weeks to go, so we haven't got long left of this little uh, can we're doing. But, without further ado, we will enjoy, in your house, a cold day in hell. Oh, just one side note, this is this should be... I'll give it a little uh, pre-watch the other day. The audio is gone in one side again, but this should be the last time, because I checked, like, four or five of the next ones, and they all got full audio, but this is going to be a bit um, dodgy on the old audio. But, anywho, please enjoy. The World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Of 
Welcome to the WWF's In Your House. Brought to you by Castrol Super Clean All-Wheel Cleaner. Live on Pay-Per-View. Happy Mother's Day and welcome everybody to the sold-out Richmond, Virginia Coliseum where it's a cold day in hell, and welcome to In Your House. Jim Ross alongside Jerry the King Lawler here at ringside, and King not only tonight with a WWF title be decided when the phenom of the WWF, The Undertaker, takes on the toughest SOB many of us have ever seen, Stone Cold Steve Austin. We're also, King, going to see the first pay-per-view event in the WWF from the world's most dangerous man. That's right, Ross, you're right. It's Mother's Day, and here I am sitting next to the kind of guy my mother warned me not to associate with. But I'm gonna tell you this, speaking of others, Ken Shamrock, I hope you kissed yours goodbye, and I hope you hugged your little wife, Tina, and your four little kids, because I promise you, you may not ever see them again after Vader gets through with you tonight. Folks, we certainly appreciate you inviting us into your house for this, for this great event, and Ahmed Johnson, may long remember this Mother's Day in Richmond, Virginia, because Ahmed will take on three men, three men in succession, and if Ahmed is successful, King, the nation of domination has vowed that they will abolish their organization. That's right, it'll fall apart, it'll crumble, it'll be disbanded, but Ahmed Johnson will not oh, be successful. Flash, you are well, folks, we are ready to go here. Flash forward! Coming down the aisle, we've got Flash Funk. He's uh, alone. He's got no Funkettes. We've still got the house uh, on the entrance way, but now we've got a metal ramp. We're getting very uh, extravagant here in the WWF. Obviously, this is metal ramp is being used. has been used for a few weeks, maybe, but in Monday Night Raw. Flash uh, high five on the, uh, the fans around the ringside area. Tito Santano and uh, Carlos Cabrera. I think he said it's going to be happening. Show on your left, John Broussard on your right. Big French, Polly Fried Eggs. <laughs> Polly Fried Eggs, Grandma. Jerry Lawler busting out a Johnny V. Uh, what not there. Quite a few Austin 316 shirts in the ground, which is good to see. The Fink is our ring announcer and our referee for this first contest. is going to be Jimmy Corderas. Flash Funk looking uh, flashy in his blue uh, singlet. In a, uh, in a silver knee-high boots, and his opponent is going to be one Hunter Hurst Helmsley. So Triple H has now got a new manager, the uh, eighth wonder, well she's not quite the eighth at the minute, she's maybe the uh, Seven and a, seven and a half. Wonder of the <laughs> China. We saw her. Uh, when did we see her? 
in your house, 13 final four, she attacked Marlena from the crowd, didn't she? This is the first time we've seen her on uh, the cannon. She's wearing a, a black, looking very ominous. There's China standing in front of Triple H with her arms crossed. Triple H, is, uh, his uh, attitude is starting, uh, starting to change a little. He's still got a bit of a pomposity about him, but that's uh, his attitude is definitely starting to uh, degenerate. <laughs> We're seeing the footage from Shotgun Saturday night last night. Mankind had Triple H and a mandible claw and China came in and a, a low blowed old uh, Mrs. Foley's baby boy. And then he does it again and then she kicks him directly in the balls. But she is a dangerous and an evil woman. And the referee ready to go here. There's so the buzz rung and we are underway. China exiting the ring. They're going to stand uh, ringside. Triple H wearing a, a nice uh, maroon tights. Black boots, Colin Edward type. Flash pushing Triple H into the corner. Clean break. Clean break. And a little, uh, a little uh, wiggle, cock wiggle by Flash Funk. Shoved by Triple H. Kick by Flash, side headlock. Triple H now, shove off. Shadow attack with Dango's Triple H. Off the ropes comes Flash. Leap front by Triple H. Hip toss reversed by Flash with one of his own. And a beautiful drop kick there by Flash Funk. And drag takedown into an arm bar. Slowing the pace down. Has a uh, through a scalper bought five front row seats. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, I can see those seats from where we're sitting. But five seats available for the uh, hard yeah, foundation. Sit down. Get away from there. there. There they are. They'll be sitting at ringside. We don't know exactly when uh, the uh, the leader Bret Hart will bring his uh, entourage out, but they will be out here at. Flash front with the continued armbar now putting his uh, weight on the shoulder of Triple H. So we are in f full heart foundation mode. We've got Brett, Owen, Davey, Jim, and Brian here. Uh, I think Oster, so I think Brett's out with an injury at the minute, a knee injury. Um, I don't know if we've had sunny days. Have we had sunny days yet or not? Is that in June or is that tomorrow? I'm not sure. Sunny days promo. Sunny Days promo. Uh, sunny Days is... <sighs> no, I don't care. May 19th. Uh, so that's next week. What day are we on? May the 11th. Yes, yeah, so it's next week. Flash Funk uh, goes for the baseball slide. Miss Triple H turns around. Triple H is in the face of a uh, Flash Funk. Referee's now being distracted by Triple H. That allows China to now Flash Funk from behind, decking the uh, the Flash Man. Yes, yeah, so Sunny Days is next week. Yeah. Probably taped tomorrow actually, because I think they're they're doing live and then taped, aren't they? Either yeah, they're doing live and then taped. Tomorrow on Raw sees the start of the King of the Ring qualifiers. Also sees a match between Rob Van Dam and Jeff Hardy tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. And then... Oh, they're doing, they are now live, live, live every week. So, yeah. yeah. So that is now starting. So back in the ring. Oh! They the mush there by Triple H. Rock on the jaw of Flash Funk off the ropes comes Triple H. High knee there. Send the Flash Funk down. That uh, shot from China definitely took it out of Flash Funk. Triple H now putting Flash Funk in the corner. Oh, knife head stop. Opens up the uh, 
the singlet of Flash Funk with some knife edge chops now by Hunter. Stomp, punch, stomp, punch, stomp, punch, stomp, stomp, stomp. Triple H uh, opening up the can of whoop tushy. So I don't know if there are a couple in real life at this time. Obviously there would be. Um, China was trained in the same school as Triple H as well as uh, Perry Satin. All trained by Killer Kowalski. Walter to his mates. <laughs> Triple H goes for the cover. One, two. Flash Funk kicks out following the uh, forearm shot by China. Jimmy Gordera is easily distracted by Triple H. But at least it's not fucking a Lepner. I'm sure we'll be getting that prick later. Triple H going for a suplex. Beautifully done by Triple H. Cerebrally done, if you will. Pompositae. Triple H then going to the corner, and going for a Harley race, uh, knee drop, and hits it! Right to the forehead of Flash Funk 1, 2, Triple H is calling my, uh, Ross is calling my moves. Triple H now choking away on uh, Flash Funk, choking him away. Pompicity. Just better have my microphone a bit now. Oh, joyous. Reverse chin knock now by Triple H. Slowing the pace down. I think she's got a boyfriend. I don't I, she needs a man friend. Are you volunteering? Well, I mean, you are. Oh, the king. Come got, on, Hunter. You guys will make a cute couple. Yeah. Helmsley buries the knee into the abdomen of Flash Funk. And we hope, folks, to be talking to Ken Shamrock in a few minutes. Get an update from Ken and Todd Pettengill kept us abreast of his situation. Mm, abreast. Triple H, <laughs> the Flash Funk, Irish whip by H. Oh, another high knee sending Flash Funk down and to the outside. China looking on uh, with no real mood, just looking on, seeing her man uh, doing the job. Not the job, but doing the job. Of uh, keeping Flash Funk down. This is quite a uh, quite a good little match, actually. Nice <sighs> cup of tea. Triple H choking away on uh, Flash Funk. Flash Funk on the apron on the outside. Triple H has now got him. Turns him round, and oh, big shot across the chest. Oh, and again, Triple H. Triple H now comes off the ropes and... Oh, neat at the back, sending Flash Funk. Good Lord, off the apron, down to the uh, steel rampway, face first. Triple H giving those uh, shots. Some uh, yeah, young Irishman watching on, thinking I'm going to use that move in a few years' time to bludgeon a few chests. Triple H rolls Flash Funk back in the ring. They're nice to look at, but you ain't never going to go there. <laughs> Triple H now top rope. Flash Funk gets back in the middle of the ring. Flat to Triple H comes off. Oh! Flash Funk just fell backwards with a big boot in the moosh of Triple H. Great move there. Great uh, defensive move there by Flash Funk. Fair crowd getting behind Flash. Here. Triple H back up to his feet. Flash Funk on his knees with a shot to the gut. And again. Flash Funk trying to get up to his feet. Oh, spins the legs around. Takes Triple H down. Triple H down in the corner. Knife head stopped by Flash. Two. Irish up corner, corner by Flash. Triple H hits hard and comes out with a big back body drop by Flash Funk. Flash Funk goes to the corner. And. Oh, big clothesline. Triple H uh, a flash signaling for something. Triple, uh, flash front goes with a oh, beautiful uh, split-legged leg drop. Moonsault leg drop of some sort there by Flash Funk. What a manoeuvre, if you will. Flash front goes to the top rope with his back to Triple H and a oh, high cross body from the top rope one. No. 
Last Frank Sigmund for the 450. Durex begging off in the corner. Big around by Flash. Left to right, left to right, left to right. Oh! Durex go, goes, gets caught upside down. Following the Irish ship and a spinning heel kick by Flash Funk takes down Triple H. Flash Funk again calling for uh, the Funky Flash Splash, according to JR. Flash Funk top rope with his back to Triple H. Oh, Triple H takes the legs out. Make a wish there, Flash. Triple H coming behind Flash Funk. He's a come, he's a come from behind, can't go. Do you want to go for a back suplex, maybe? Oh, no. Oh. Flash Funk uh, ended up on his, on his belly welly. The Flash face first right over the top of Helsing. Watch this move. Triple H picks up Flash Funk. Looks like he's going to go for the pedigree, maybe. Middle of the ring. Hooks the arms up. And pedigree. One, two... Three, winner of the match, Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Hunter Hurst Helmsley, with a little help from China, winning this contest. Not to take anything away from the athleticism or ability of the former Intercontinental Champion, but King, I think you got to admit that China was more than just a little bit of help. Well, you may get to see a little extracurricular activity oh, right here, too. Oh, wait a minute, what wait a minute. Do? What is she doing here? How strong is this woman? What in the heck? I don't know what the hell she's doing. has a cyborg female on his hand under his employ and she's going to do whatever Helmsley wants her to do. China picked up uh, Flash Funk, carried him around the ring and then dropped him balls first on the top rope which then uh, he just basically fell to the outside and was made to look like a fucking complete jobber. How dare they do that to two cod Scorpio. Watch out the cops coming. Well, look at the muscular development of this woman. One more time, let's take another look. I'd like to see if she can lift you like this, Ross. Well, I don't think I'd want to try that on the side. Watch this, look at this. And this is amazing strength. Flash Buck's got to be 245. Oh my gosh. He's walking around like a oh, oh. And right there you see the results. And then earlier in the match, again, that was a that was a, that led to the downfall of Flash Funk. Helmsley wins it, folks. And uh, we'll talk to Ken Shamrock in just a moment. Check out the WWF Superstar Line at 1-900-737-4WWF on option number five. Hear exclusive interviews with the winners and losers of tonight's matchups. It is open all night long. 1-900-737-4WWF. Just $1.49 a minute and kids under 18 must have your parents' permission before calling. The WWF Superstar Line. Well, folks, we're going to talk to Ken Shamrock in just a moment. We'd like to show you some footage of Ken Shamrock in action. Of course, the Hart Foundation had bought those, uh, or the scalp for those five uh, ringside seats. The Hart Foundation will be here at ringside a little bit later. But as we said, we'll talk to Ken Shamrock momentarily. But uh, let's take you back to some uh, ultimate fighting footage of Ken Shamrock in action, King. Uh, the most decorated, the most recognized ultimate fighter of all time is this man. Well, you're, you're just super impressed by this guy, but I want to tell you something. He's got to prove it to me Watch here in the World out. Wrestling Federation. It's going to be a totally different ball game, baby. Ken Shamrock dominated the ultimate fighting world, but will Ken Shamrock be able to dominate a man that outweighs him 200 pounds? And, and Ken, the question I, we've got to ask is, will the attack earlier tonight by Vader and Mankind have an adverse effect on your fight tonight? I'm focused. I'm in my zone. Mankind invader will not shake me from my zone. And when that bell rings, it's knuckle up time. All right, thank you very much. That's what happened earlier tonight. You see that, Ken? Thank you very much. Uh, we won't bother you anymore. Stay in that zone and best of luck tonight. Yeah, and get ready to get in the twilight zone. That's where Vader's gonna knock you to. 
Well, I'll tell you something, King. It's going to be a, a matchup again that can only be won by submission or by knockout. And if anybody in the WWF deserves to be knocked out for their actions, it's this man coming to the ring now. For one fall, about to come down the aisle, weighing 287 pounds, Mankind. A few uh, cheers for Mankind as he comes down the rampway. No Paul Bearer, because obviously uh, he got burned severely last um, last time on in your house where mankind was uh, facing against uh, the undertaker and here he's now in the second match on tonight's card but uh, something tells me that uh, mankind's trajectory is going to be uh, on the up very soon on raw when mankind shocked the world all bear was trying to secure The Undertaker back into the camp. Mankind under the ring comes out and burns The Undertaker right in the face with that huge fireball. And certainly uh, we were, were shocked at that. That was after The Undertaker had won the WWF title at WrestleMania. Well, uh, obviously, Ross, it was a master plan by Mankind and by Paul Bearer to put it in once and for all to The Undertaker, but they didn't get the job done. Well, Paul Bearer, for six years, was the manager of The Undertaker. Paul Bearer has orchestrated this whole situation. And then last month at In Your House, Mankind, again, when he wrestled The Undertaker, brought some flammable material into the ring. The Undertaker secured it and then burnt the face, the round face of Paul Bearer. Yeah, they were going for the second time. They were going to put The Undertaker away once and for all, but somehow The Undertaker turned the table. And now poor Paul Bearer's been out of action since. We haven't seen... We haven't seen Paul Bearer in over a month, but in any event, more on that momentarily as Todd Pettengill is standing by with Rocky Maivia. Thank you very much. Obviously, Mankind has a story, but so does the rookie sensation, Rocky Maivia. Rock, I want you to take a look at some footage here. Your debut in the World Wrestling Federation back at Madison Square Garden, November the 17th at the WWF Survivor Series. Just unbelievable. And then, of course, you winning the Intercontinental title on Febu in February, Lowell, Massachusetts, Raw Thursday, Raw Thursday Live, unbelievable, and then just two weeks ago, losing the Intercontinental title to Owen Hart. We saw you victorious here in the, uh, in the footage, and then, of course, just a couple of weeks ago, losing the Intercontinental title to Owen Hart. Did it come too quickly for Rocky Maivia? Did success come too soon? Yeah, you know what, Todd? Maybe success did come too soon, but at the same time, I've learned a whole hell of a lot here in the World Wrestling Federation. I even surprised myself with the success I've had. Like I said, I've ho I learned a whole hell of a lot on the way up, but I also learned a whole hell of a lot more on the way down. And, and you know what, Todd? This isn't about my destiny. This is about my determination. Rocky Maivia on his way to the squared circle to face mankind. JR and King, back to you. Todd, thank you. Well, he's fixing to learn a whole heck of a lot more when he steps in the ring with mankind. His opponent, he's going to get a lesson. From Miami, Florida, weighing 275 pounds, Rocky Maivia. Rocky Maivia, as we have documented his grandfather, the high chief Peter Maivia, wrestled in the WWF. His father, Rocky Johnson, was a former WWF Tag Champion, Rocky Maivia. This young man is the first third-generation athlete in the history of the WWF. Rocky Maivia coming down the ramp, wearing his uh, black trunks with blue trim and his white boots with the calves cut out of them. Jack Doan's going to be our referee. Uh, uh, Rocky recently lost the Intercontinental title to Owen Hart, by the sounds of it. Rocky Maivia have been married one week today, apparently. This is a future uh, coming together of a massive feud. Obviously, the Rock and Mankind would be tag team champions, partners, rivals, you name it. The late 90s, early 2000s are sort of dominated by these two gentlemen. Bella's running the wheel underway, but Mankind just sat rocking in the corner. Rocky wants him out of the corner, ready to wrestle, but Mankind just sat there rocking backwards and forwards. 
Rocky turns his back and that allows Mankind to come. Nope. Right hand by Rock. Right hand by Rock. Right hand by Rock. Irish whip by Maya. The uh, oh, medium sized back body drop. Oh, drop kick there by Rocky Mavir. Sends Mankind down. And a big clothesline sends Rock over and out. Sends Mankind out over a pro. Mankind back up to his feet. Pulls Rocky Mavir to the outside. Right hand to the head. <coughs> right hand to the head. Oh, regular back by Mankind. If you're watching some of them George the Animal Steel matches. Rams Movere off the apron, the hardest part of the ring. Rolls him back into the ring. Mankind follows. Kick by Mankind. Kick again. Mankind picks up the, the rock. Irish whips him, reversed by Movere. Oh, beautiful power slam there by Movere off the uh, Irish whip. It's the ropes. Oh, misses an elbow drop. Mankind now they nope reversal by Rocky Movie into Hammerlock. Uh, oh, Rocky drops the uh, knee to the back. Jack down down there asking uh, my my kind of feels to give. Mankind says no. That's not Cold day of hell with a hot can of whoopass, says a crowd. Sign. Hamlock still applied by Rocky Movere. Back over by Mankind. Back over by Mankind. And again, breaks the hold. Big headbutt by Mankind. Rocking the third generation superstar. Irish up corner corner by Mankind. Nope, Rocky stops himself. Leaps to the top rope and a... Oh, nice uh, chop from the top rope. Rocky Movere goes for the... Our bar. And we're live right now over in the UK. You know that, don't you, Rob? I do. It's late night there. We thank all the folks for staying up late with us on Sky Sports One. It's also some of the crowd that says Bischoff fears McMahon. I suppose that's still allowed to sit there. I suppose no one's uh, had that taken away from him. I guess Vince isn't here. I'd Guess it, well, he might be backstage, but he's definitely not here for commentary. Oh, single leg uh, sweep there by Rocky Movere sends Mankind down. Mankind oh, throws Movere to that side. Mankind still in the ring. Mankind on the apron measures Rocky Movere with a oh cannonball. Beautiful cannonball sent on there by Mankind. Almost like a, in a cannonball situation. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I, not too comfortable anytime Mankind's out here. Hard right hand of Rocky Maya. I see last month we saw Mankind launched into a, uh, a ringside table from the Undertaker. Head first. Mankind back in the ring. Waiting for... Rocky Marvia. Rocky Marvia's got himself up by Mankind helps him back to the apron, now back in the ring. Puts Mankind puts Rocky Marvia in the corner. Right, right, right. Pummeling now, Mankind pummeling. Pummel, pummel, pummel. Mankind now gets out of the corner. And Oh, knee to the face, good lord. Mankind coming in at hundred miles an hour. Now squealing in the face of mankind. That's right, in, in the face of Rocky Maivia. I have two lovely daughters, thank you. <laughs> you want to talk about your children? I didn't think so. I want to talk about mankind. There you go. I want to talk about what mankind is doing to this punk. Mankind right, the rams Rocky Maivia head first at the top turnbuckle. As we get a shot from the crowd here in the Richmond Coliseum. Is that the same Richmond Coliseum that did Survivor Series? 1987? No, that's not right, is it? <laughs> uh, 1987. 
Is this the same? No. Mid Atlantic, it did in 1987, but 1988. No house shows, no. Game Rack and Bash, it's not. No, it's just. What was that then? Uh, what was that? I'm sure that was Richmond Coliseum. Uh, Survivor Series 88. Ding. In Richmond Coliseum. I'm guessing this, uh, that held 13,000. This has only got 9,000. So oh, that's Richmond, Virginia. This is that's Richmond, Ohio. That'd be why. The rock just smashes mankind with a uh, rock bottom across the uh, steel rail. Obviously, it's not a match. Not not called the rock bottom here. It's called the Uranagi, Uranagi or whatever it's called. But again, okay, this is why it's Richmond. This is Richmond, Virginia, not Richmond, Ohio. My mistake. I just double check that that is right. I am correct in my assumptions. My God, my God. Yes, Richmond, Ohio. That's why there's two Richmonds. Of course there is, because, you know, America. Well, you can't just have one single name. You have to have 12 places called one thing. Irish. Oh, no, mankind can barely uh, get across the ring there. Rocky sent him for a corner corner Irish ship, but mankind fell down halfway. Kicked by Rocky Marvier. Big right hand. And a belly to belly suplex. Goes for cover. One, two, kick out by Mankind. Marvier picks up Mankind. Irish whips him. Oh, ducks his head, spins him around. Big close on by Mankind. human being could withstand. I mean, he would have killed a normal person and, and didn't even phase him. Inside cradle, Rocky Maivia's got it wrapped up, but can't find the three as mankind. Maivia off the ropes. Oh, close right to the back of the head. Sends mankind down. We're seeing a bit of a, starting to see a bit of a viciousness to uh, Rocky Maivia here. Yeah, come, come from behind, kind of guy. <laughs> Maybe he picks up mankind, scoops him up, puts him on the shoulder. Oh, drops him with the shoulder breaker. And there's some sort of weird uh, jiggy jiggy thrusty move. Okay, Maybe now going up to the top rope. Mankind's on the other side of the ring. Rocky Maybe's on the top rope. And big high cross body, but mankind rolls it over. Ma mandible claw, mandible claw, mandible claw, mandible claw. Mankind's got the mandible claw applied with a with a roll through of the high cross body. Jack don't calls it. Mankind wins. Mankind wins. Some people will go to desperate lengths to possess one of these shirts. 
All you have to do is call 815-734-1161 or send a check or money order to the address on your screen. It's only 20 bucks plus shipping and handling. And that's the bottom line. So call now. Well, folks, we're just moments away from Ahmed Johnson's uh, matchup with three members of the Nation of Domination. We'd like to take you back to last Monday on Raw is War, a very unique situation where Crush would wrestle three men, King, and I think this was more of anything, a message to Ahmed Johnson to show Ahmed just how tough not only Crush was, but the entire nation for that matter. Well, that's right. Farouk had handpicked three opponents for Crush, and he was going to show Ahmed that Ahmed wasn't the only one that might be capable of beating three people in one night, that Crush was capable of doing it too. And he disposed of the first opponent in record time, and Farouk demanded that they send out the second one, and here he came. And you see what happened to him, Ross. Heart punch coming up here. Oh, yeah. And the second guy is disposed of. I mean, just that simple. But then something bad happened back in the dressing room that nobody knew about. The third hand-picked opponent was... Uh, Can you please make this a little harder? Would you send down the next poor victim? Yeah, well, he was replaced by this man right here. And when we saw the Pearl River plunge on the 300-pound crush, we knew that that man in the Green Bay Packer jacket with that silk stocking over his head was indeed one Ahmed Johnson. Well, if you ask me, it was a cheap shot by Ahmed to try to pull a stunt like that. We are the nation, a domination. We are the nation coming live and in color. Don't miss the man from the ball, brush your mother. Listen, what I'm saying is for real, not playing. Farouk is the man that hit your knees. So the Nation of Domination coming down to the ringside. JC, Ice and Wolfie D still here. So they're doing the double duty in ECW and here. Are they here long? I don't know. No, not that one. Uh, da -da 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 um, I didn't have many matches in WWE. None at all, really. Tough and my tomorrow is their last. Uh, is their last appearance in the WWF? It's a mixture of IWM and South ECW, USWA. MC that Memphis oh, Music City Wrestling. Ahmed Johnson, when you agreed to this evening, many people thought obviously it was a no-win situation for you. Then in the WWF free-for-all, you agreed to face all three members of the Nation of Domination in succession in order. Ahmed, the odds, no doubt, stacked against you. You know what? The odds always stuck against me. But for Rook, if you're any kind of man. You were stepping in the ring first. See, this is all about, this is about me and you. This ain't about the most two goons you brung. But I'll tell you what, if you bring them to the party, they might as well dance. And I'll tell you what, after tonight, me or you all, somebody's going to the end. Yes. Very good. Well done. Loud noises. <laughs> Yeah. Nation Domination, you've got Crush, Savvy Vega, Dino Brown, Clarence Mason, Farouk, and a couple of other uh, guys, as well as PG-13. Mike Keown is going to be the referee. And here comes the Pearl River Powerhouse. Like Ahmed Johnson's music, <clears throat> getting a good, uh, good ovation here for the Pearl River Powerhouse. Ahmed Johnson coming out in his uh, red trunks, thigh-high knee pads, and whatever else he's wearing, as well as uh, red boots. Ahmed Johnson wants Farouk first, but uh, Nation Domination are having a conflab. I don't think um, I don't think Farouk's going to be coming in first whatsoever. Crush or Savio. 
Here comes Gorilla Monsoon to be the president. Monsoon. Coming over here, what's he want? Monsoon has ordered the nation domination up the ramp. One person down here at a time, so the man starting the match is going to be Crush. Crush is wearing uh, black tights, black boots, grey vest. Crush tried to attack Armour Johnson uh, from behind, but I think that backfired on him. Armour Johnson, bigger and and again, big round to the uh, Kona native, Shakabra. Amy Johnson comes off the ropes, and a beautiful scissor kick to the back of Crush. Shades of Booker T, if you will. Both men have very similar build, similar height. Crush with a probably a slight advantage, a uh, slight. Um, 1989 is Ahmed Johnson crushes 80 something, isn't he? Yeah, Crush has been got three year um, experiences. Obviously, former WWF tag team champion as part of Demolition. Super kick game by Crush sends down Ahmed Johnson. Crush uh, raising the uh, the black fist. Chris picks up Ahmed Johnson, scoops him up and slams him down. Chris going to the second rope on the inside. Chris. Oh, the uh, shite second rope close on one, two, kick up by Ahmed. Nice and domination looking out from uh, on top of the ramp. Got a good, uh, good, good view there from the top of the ramp. Crush now with a uh, nerve hold, slowing the pace down for this very fast match we've just had. <laughs> Ahmed back up to his feet, still in the hold. Oh, big round by Crush. Go for a. Oh, beautiful suplex there by Crush. Armour Johnson's a big boy to be getting up there. Crush goes for the cover. One, two, kick up by Armour. Armour's holding his leg, following the suplex. No idea what happened there. Crush now doing something that we can't quite see because the camera's looking behind the Nation Domination's shoulder again. Oh, Armour now they. Oh! Gourd Buster. Suplex goes to the cover. One, two. Oh, man. Crush kicks out. Sorry, crush kicks out. Pompacity. Ahmed oh, now picks up Crush. Irish Ripsum not reversed by Crush. Sleeper hold applied by Crush. Good lord. A mass of muscle. I tell you, King, you know as well as anybody, Big Johnson is hard to handle. Big Johnson is hard to handle, apparently. <laughs> Crush with a sleeper hold again. Gonna wear down Ahmed Johnson. Obviously, Ahmed's got to go th potentially through three men. <laughs> Crow getting behind Ahmed. Ahmed's down to his knees. 
to be commended for trying to fight his way out of it and make a better life for himself. And we're still waiting on the arrival, folks, of the Hart Foundation. Those chairs uh, have been purchased by Bret Hart and company from a scalper, we were told, by the hitman. This place, uh, beautiful Richmond Coliseum, is sold out. We're glad that you invited us in, into your home here on Mother's Day. I want to wish my mom a happy Mother's look, Day. Look, look, this is it, this is it. Ah. You want to wish your mom a happy Mother's Day? Well, yeah. Talked to her earlier today. You did. Yeah. Reverse chin lock by Cross. But look at all that fight. Coming, coming back. Back up to his feet. Elbow at the gut. Elbow at the gut. Punch. Off the ropes comes Ahmed. Oh, big knee in the bread basket there by Crush. Crush trying to beckon the nation to down, but uh, they're standing stoic on the top on top of the ramp. They've been told by uh, Gurren Monsoon to stay there, and they're actually behaving. Crush now with an Irish hip. Stop looking. Oh, knee to the bread. No, Ahmed holds on to the leg. One, two, kick out by Crush. Crush now, dominating. <laughs> oh, he's going for a pile driver. Oh, it drops Ahmed with a pile driver. Crush raising the fist again and then trying to get the nation to come down. But no one's moving. Crush now with a fist. Is he going for the heart punch, maybe? Crush sets up the arm, go for the heart punch. And no. Oh, spinning heel kick again by Armour Johnson. One, two, three. Armour gets the win on the first fall. This journey is successful. And it looks like Savio Vega is going to be next. Yeah, but Savio's got that skip ankle. Well, I tell you, what a counter. Take a look, take a look at this. Crush was just fixed to put him away with a big heart punch. And what happens? Out of nowhere, Ahmed Johnson lead us. Deliver the hard punch. No, he comes right over. Right in the chin. And now look at the limping side. Savio Vega now limping down to ringside. Savio Vega uh, wearing black. Black singlet, black boots. Slides into the ring now. Met by Ahmed Johnson, who's clubbing. Irish up now by Ahmed. Big back boy up by Ahmed Johnson. Goes for the cover. One, two. Back up to their feet. Clothesline by Ahmed sends Savio down. Big clothesline sends Savio down. Ahmed picks up Savio, puts him in the corner. I rush up corner. Corner note reversed by Savio. Ahmed goes into the corner. Oh, a big spinning heel kick there by Savio Vega in the corner. Bouncy, bouncy on the outside. Who's a not limping anymore. Stump by Savio. So stumping away on Big Johnson. They're standing over the fallen Pearl River powerhouse. Savio. Oh, there's some shots to the kidneys. There's historically injured kidneys of Ahmed Johnson. So we're now working over those uh, meaty bits on the back. Oh, kicks now out of the kidneys. So we're now choking uh, Ahmed Johnson over the second rope. Oh, and again, kick to the kidneys. So we're working over Ahmed. Rams from head first. Oh, exposed turnbuckle. When did that get exposed? When did that get taken off? Good Lord. Ahmed crawling, trying to use Savio Vega to get himself up, but Savio is moving. Ahmed trying to find the ropes to try and get himself back up to his feet. Oh, kick by Savio. And again. 
it here in Richmond. I like Richmond. I've been here many times. You would like Richmond. So here with a fist in the air, trying to get the, the get the nod of approval from Farouk. Savio so uh, taunting Ahmed. Oh, Ahmed's down. Swinging for the fences. Savio sporting a couple of new tattoos on his arm. Maybe that's some sort of rite of passage with the nation. I don't know. So cold. Savio doesn't want to be disqualified here because remember, Ahmed's got to win three decisions. You mean if Savio got disqualified, that's a decision he wins? That's right, King. Uh oh. Got a mind like a steel trap. There's a little look on the look of concern on the face of Farouk up there, but I think I think the plan here is just to wear Ahmed Johnson down. I mean, the longer he stays at her, hey, how long can a man last? You know, a match against Crush is so physically draining, but then another one right on the heels of that against Savio. Big hip toss there by Ahmed Johnson off the Irish whip. Ahmed's woozy, but he's up on his feet. Where's he going? Ahmed climbing. Second rib on the inside. Savio's down. Oh, Ahmed went for a big splash, but Savio just got out of the way. Farouk trying to direct a bit of traffic from up there. Ahmed wearing one of them uh, nasal strips that people had were uh, were popular in the late nineties. I just talked. About, I'm just talk, what the hell, Jay? I just talked about that. Good lord! So he was slapping and taunting Ahmed Johnson while Ahmed's on his knees. So he picks him up. Oh, bigger hand. And again, Ahmed uh, returning with a uh, fight uh, blocks right hand, right hand, right hand again from Ahmed. Put Savio in the corner, corner corner Irish whip reversed by Savio. Savio comes for a big splash in the corner, but Ahmed moves. Ahmed holding up against the ropes, blocks right hand, one of his own. Picks up Savio with a back suplex. And we go through the cover. One, two. Kick out just by Savio. Kick out just. Beckman on the knees. Beckman back up to their feet. Ahmed Johnson with the Irish whip. Catches Savio with a big power slam. Two count. Ahmed's calling for the power of a plunge. Savio uh, senses that and he uh, rolls to the outside. Ahmed's now full on him out there. Beckman up to the feet on the outside. Savio on the run. <coughs> Trying to run anyway. Oh, big super kick by Savio on the outside. Savio throws Mark Eaton out of the way. Mark Eaton, sorry. Savio now with a steel chair. Ooh, straight into the face. Referee calls for, uh, calls for the bell. Oh, Savio's annihilating Ahmed with that steel chair. Savio rolls Ahmed back into the ring. Follows him in the ring with the chair. Referee has rung the bell. Savio's been disqualified, I would imagine. Oh! Savio now wailing away on the legs of Ahmed Johnson with that chair. Oh, now they are the torso. Oh, and again, Savio jabbing that chair into the extremities of Ahmed Johnson. Savio loses, but that allows Farouk to come down and take advantage of this situation. Savio, sorry, Fruit now coming down the ringside with his arm in a sling. And his black singlet, black boots with his uh, colourful strip going down. Fruit now taking his arm out of a sling. And there seems to be some sort of a miraculous recovery there from, um, from Farouk. 
Fruit now slapping Ahmed in the head. Stumping away. Ahmed trying to get himself up. But Ahmed the fruit just slaps him down. Picks him up. Small package by Ahmed. Small package one, two. Fruit now stumping away on Johnson. Perhaps the greatest defensive lineman ever to play at FSU. Man, he's changed his whole life. He's changed his whole philosophy. We're in that time period where uh, JR looks to uh, tell everybody about their history. They're doing it with gold dust, they're doing it with mankind, they're doing it with, they're doing it with a lot of these guys. Off the ropes comes Farouk. Ahmed catches him, spine buster! Ahmed does it with a massive spine buster. They're calling for the. Uh, Calling for the Pearl River Plunge. Ahmed Johnson is a Pearl River Plunger. They're three count away from demolishing the Nation of Domination. Ahmed hooks it. Ahmed hooks the arms. And drops Farouk with a Pearl River Plunge. But he can't capitalise. He can't capitalise. He can't capitalise. That punishment he took from Savio Vega. Ahmed now covers him. One, two... Kick out by Farouk, kick out by Farouk. A slight, uh, slight, and uh, it's the uh, unable to capitalise cost him the match, I think. Ahmed thinks he's won. Farouk, oh, a chop lock. Farouk picks up Ahmed. Picks him up with the Dominator. Farouk turns him over. One, two, three. Farouk wins, Farouk wins. The Nation of Domination continues. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Ahmed Johnson has got nothing to be ashamed of. Ahmed Johnson did all he could do against three men. A great effort by Ahmed Johnson. I'm going to give the devil his due. I never dreamed that Ahmed Johnson could pull out that kind of performance. He did exactly what you said, a valiant effort. Not just beating Crush, but even also getting a win over Savio Vega and coming within an eyelash of beating Farouk. But it just wasn't to be. No one man can beat three. Ahmed Johnson looked as if he had things going his way, but it, it just wasn't to be. Even after the Pearl River plunge, Ahmed unable to capitalize on the pinning situation. But I'll tell you, Ahmed Johnson has got nothing at all to be ashamed of. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Shamrock and Vader are just around the corner. But I'd like for you right now to check out next month's pay-per-view. Please, Ken, we're hungry. Good luck, crap. Ah, heaven. The great ring in the sky. I truly am the king. Not so fast, Lola. He's no king. He's no king. Uh. Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> WWF, King of the Ring. I'm in live pay-per-view. Thank you very much. What do you think there, King? Well, I want to tell you this. This pay-per-view event, the King of the Ring, yep. in June, is going to get medieval if you know what I mean. June the 8th, ladies and gentlemen, Providence, Rhode Island is a side for the King of the Ring, and it is going to be a very special matchup. Now, we'd like to take you back to last Monday on Raw is War. Ken Shamrock uh, was at ringside providing some color commentary as Vader went one-on-one -on -one with Goldust. This one got entirely out of hand, as you will see. Take a look, Shamrock. You're looking into your future right now. Shut up. Oh, yeah. With a victory, and he's looking right at Ken Shamrock, right in his eye. Here is Jovener, and Shamrock is at breaking. Peter. No holds barred, ladies and gentlemen. Submission or knockout. It's real simple. Somebody's going to tap out, or somebody's going to be knocked out. Ken, best of luck to you this Sunday. Thank yeah, you. get your tapping arm ready. You wouldn't know what you're talking about. All right, and Peter. Looking down at the Shamrock continually. 
shut up. You'd be playing Mr. Vader's game, obviously, if you, if you get up, Jim. Yeah, go ahead, get up, Jim. you got the game by doing it now. That's good butt kicking on Worldwide TV. That's what he's got the game. You want me in there? What does it look like? Oh, oh. oh yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're not going to... Better spits at Ken Shamrock and that brings in the world's most dangerous man. These two men are rolling around the ring. Getting ready for this massive uh, brawl we're going to be seeing in a few short seconds television announcers but uh vader if i could take you back to earlier this evening on the wwf free-for-all uh, let's take a look at this attack ken shamrock doing an interview when, from out of nowhere mankind and vader just attacking ken shamrock i want to know what was going through your mind during this attack i was playing with the boy i was playing with the boy's mind abc says he's the most dangerous man in the world they said nothing about the World Wrestling Federation. The only way to win this match, submission or knockout. What is your strategy as you face, as you said, the world's most dangerous man? Ken Shamrock. He knows nothing about pain. He knows nothing about the power of Vader. And he certainly knows nothing about Vader's pain game. Because it's time. Oh, yeah, it's time. It's Vader time. Get back to you guys at ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, the following no holds barred contest is scheduled for one fall to a finish. There will be no pinfalls, and the only way to win is either by knockout or submission. With time! It's time! It's made time! Ladies and gentlemen, one clarification to the rule. There is no standing eight count. No standing eight count in this matchup. So coming down the ringside, coming down the ramp is Big Vader. Wearing his traditional uh, black and red singlet, red mask, red boots. The big Rocky Mountain Mastodon coming down for this no holds barred match. A decent response here from the uh, Richmond, Virginia crowd. Lots of Vader signs in the uh, in the air. Vader Tom Bebe. I'm sure the referee is Timmy White, I think. Looks like Timmy White. Vader bouncing off the ropes. Bouncy, bouncy. Yeah, Timmy. Yeah, Timmy, watch the referee. We're awaiting uh, the in ring debut of Ken Shamrock, I think. I think this is the in, well, the in ring WF. Obviously, he's been wrestling for a while at this point as uh, Vince Torelli. Uh, this is his. Is this his. In ring debut. Uh, WWF. He'd had a no holds exhibition uh, on the seventh of April against Vernon White, who's a Ken Shamrock trainer. But he's been Wayne Shamrock. He's been Vince Torelli. He's been wrestling since the mid eighties. Right, in 1989, he had his debut in the WF as Ken Shamrock. He lost to Barry Horwitz in a house show and then went to Japan, teaming with Can Ams. Yeah, yeah, she was had a, had a career. Obviously, UFC as well. So, Bella's ring, we are underway. Ken Shamrock wearing uh, red trunks, red and black boots. Not coming out to his uh, classic Ken Shamrock entrance, but. Both men. Uh, both men just sort of jostling. Circling. Vader trying to, Shamrock trying to take Vader down, but Vader gets to the ropes. Rules. 
Maybe in the middle of the ring. Shamrock. Oh, kicks Vader right in the uh, in the hamstring, and again. Oh, and again. But Vader clobbering. Shamrock sort of kick and run, kick and run here for Shamrock. Charlie Horse. Punch to the gut by Vader, followed by go behind, but Shamrock's blocking. Shamrock's now breaking the fingers and going for a wrist lock. Vader gets to the ropes. Kamora lock kind of thing there. Shamrock was trying to apply. Made infamous by uh, Brock Lesnar a few years ago. Both men back in the middle of the ring. Oh, kick air by Shamrock. Straight to the league. Oh. Swings and misses. Vader now gets Shamrock in the corner. Shamrock now being pummeled, but he's now he's still been able to move. Dash and move, dash and move. Both men circling. Both men ready. Oh, go behind by Ken Shamrock. Trying to pick up the big man, but Vader gets to the ropes. Clean break. Again, both men to a neutral position. Both men circling. Curling over. Oh no, kick by Shamrock, kick by Shamrock, kick by Shamrock. Goes behind. Trying to take Vader down and oh, takes him down. Waist up, take down by Ken Shamrock. But Vader rolls to the outside. Vader walking around outside, trying to get some feeling back in the those extremities that are getting kicked. If an individual is unable to continue, that the match would end. Vader's arm or wrist is hurt. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, Ken Shamrock, former UFC champion, and again, the our friends at the Ultimate Fighting Championship will have a pay-per-view on Friday night, May the 30th. Why don't you go over and in, announce in, for him, Ross? In the, uh, in the United States only. He's sucking up to them for him. Well, somebody says nice, something nice to someone, they're always sucking Look at that! There you go! There you go! There you go! Vader back in the ring now, attacking Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock goes behind though, and oh, beautiful belly to back suplex here by Ken Shamrock. Vader's up to his feet, kick by Shamrock. Elbow smash, elbow smash by Shamrock. Rock on the Mastodon, oh, and again. Shamrock putting Vader in the corner, pummeling with elbow strikes. Vader down to the outside. Vader's now on the outside. Timmy White telling him to get back in the ring. Don't mess with Timmy White, that's for damn sure. Both men back in the ring. Vader grabs him, smashes him, smashes him with them big old, big old fists, puts him against the ropes. Headbutt, headbutt, pummel, pummel. Irish rip now by Vader. What goes for a hip toss, but Shamrock blocks. Shamrock going for the ankle lock. But Vader escapes and rolls to the outside again. Right. Shamrock's too stupid to realize that. I don't think so. He was going for submission. We are told that Farouk and Ahmed Johnson are having quite the conversation on the WWF Superstar line. As we speak, that could be most interesting for our fans of the Superstar line. And again, Vader using the rules. As Vader's coming at the ring, he's covering his mouth and telling Ken Shamrock to ease up. You quite clearly hear that on the camera. Oh, Shamrock ducking the, uh, ducking the rear fists. Oh, kicks are plenty there by Shamrock to the legs and the, and the torso. Shamrock pummeling him with elbows. 
Trying to go for a front face lock now. Vader picks up Shamrock. All oh, tosses him down. Kick by Vader. Short arm clothesline by Vader. Rocks Ken Shamrock down to the ground. Shamrock now on his front. Vader mounted him. Vader with an elbow at the side of the head. Grabbing an arm bar. And now with a uh, modified Fujiwara armbar. So the double feature with a big clothesline there by Vader. Crowd getting behind Shamrock. Shamrock rolls through, but Vader, nope. Arm drag takedown by Shamrock into an armbar. Shamrock's going to lock in a, an arm bar here of sorts. Vader's now turned himself around. Shamrock's got the legs. He's got Shamrock's got an al almost like a triangle choke here. But Vader's up on his feet. And he's about to pick up Shamrock, I think. And he does. Oh! Falls back down, but that allows... Uh, that means that Shamrock gets off the, uh, off the arm. Vader back up to his feet, Shamrock still down. Vader picks up Shamrock. Vader's going for a suplex, very close to the ropes. And that is so he can then suplex him to the outside of the ring from the inside. Good lord. Vader now goes to the outside, grabs Ken Shamrock, and oh, palm strike to the chest. Shamrock trying to get up with the help of the steps, but Vader smashes him into the steps. Vader posing, standing over Ken Shamrock, picks him up. Oh, knocks him with a, a couple of shots to the belly welly. Oh, and then smashes him head first into the steel steps again. Vader uh, bleeding from the nose. Picks up Shamrock by the head. Oh, Shamrock uh, with a couple of punches to the ample gut of Vader, but Vader just stops him with one shot to the mush. Vader picks up Shamrock, rolls him back in the ring. Vader follows him. Vader puts Shamrock in the corner, choking him out. Irish up, nope, Shamrock blocks. Kick by Vader. Oh, club run by Vader. Vader going to try again for this Irish rip. Hits it. Oh, Shamrock hits hard and that's top turnbuckle, good lord. Vader with a uh, ankle pick of sorts. Vader with a leg lock ankle pick kind of thing. So this is the uh, this is the start of the tapping out era. Crowd getting behind Shamrock. Shamrock's going to uh, get out of this predicament. Oh, rolls through. Lovely escape there by Ken Shamrock. Vader back up though. Big old choke, choke body scissor here by Vader. Ken rolls through, breaks the hold. Vader puts Ken in the, in the corner. Oh, 
Body shots there, headshots by Vader. Pommeling the world's most dangerous man. Irish rip now by Vader. Comes in. Big splash. Big avalanche in the corner by Vader. Oh, kick by Shamrock, punch by Vader. Vader picks him up. Vader scoops him up, slams him down. Vader going up the top, maybe. Going for a moonsault. He's a bit too far away for the Vader bomb, so we go for the Vader salt. Nope, Vader's going up the top, Vader's going up the top. He's wasting a bit of time though, he's wasting a bit of time. Vader with a... Oh, Shamrock moved, Shamrock moved. Shamrock trying to get himself up by the ropes. Shamrock's barely up to his feet, but Vader is. Oh, kick by Shamrock to the legs, and again. And again, kicking away those big old tree trunks of Vader now, rocking him in the corner with knees and punches and everything. Shamrock unleashing hell on Big Van, on oh, Big Van Vader. Oh, big uh, scoop slam there by Shamrock. He's now got him in a oh, leg lock. Vader gets to the ropes, breaks the hold. That wasn't the ankle lock, that was the uh, it's a leg lock there by Shamrock. Shamrock again kicking away this big old tree trunks of Vader kicks him down. Turns Vader over with he's got a single crab. Single crab applied. Vader is quite close to the ropes though, so he should be able to escape this. And Vader does get to the ropes. Shamrock breaks the hold. Vader's back up to his feet. Shamrock's punching and kicking him away in the corner again. Elbow strokes, palm strikes, leg kicks, you name it. Shamrock is unleashing it here on Vader. Vader getting there. Quite too vocal about telling Shamrock to uh, calm the fuck down. Vader pushes him out the corner, but Shamrock comes back with elbow strikes. Oh, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> Big right hand from Vader. Knocks Shamrock down in one hit. Vader stands above him. Oh, no. Ankle lock, ankle lock applied by Shamrock, ankle lock applied by Shamrock, ankle lock applied. Vader taps, Vader taps, Vader taps. Vader was stood above Ken Shamrock like he was going to drop his butt across him, but Ver Shamrock with the ankle lock. And the winner of this no holds barred match and starting a new era of uh, tapping out that still goes on today. Where you can't tap the mat anymore, like back in the day you used to tap the mat for trying to get the crowd behind you. But now that is a uh, resemblance of a tap out. Ken Shamrock has brought that to the WWF. Mike Tyson a coward? Well, Mike Tyson hasn't accepted Ken Shamrock's uh, challenge. And maybe after watching this, Iron Mike will want no part of the world's most dangerous man. Take another look. Watch these. Watch this. Watch this right hand. Oh, boom. I thought it would be over right there. He didn't connect just exactly right. If he'd have got him with the fifth, good. It would have been over. But then Shamrock countered and to the ankle submission. He's trying to break his ankle. Shamrock, he made the bully submit. You love saying that, don't you, Ross? It's a fact. Well, like I said, it wasn't pretty. It was a physical, it was an intense matchup. Trouble getting Vader up here. Well, I guess his, his ankle's nearly broke. Well, his leg is all knotted up from those kicks to the thigh. Vader finally on his back up vertical. I'll tell you what, that was a, a real intense match, a stiff match. Very unlike what we are used to seeing here in the WWF as far as the technique and style is concerned. Vader's ankle could be broken. You gotta know that his, 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 uh, his quadricep muscle has gotta be screaming. That's the thigh muscle king, by the way. 
to what? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are still awaiting the arrival of the Hart Foundation. Those are their seats. Bret Hart and company bought those seats from a scalper. This event has been sold out for quite some time. And Brett and, and uh, Brett and company bought those seats. And a man that certainly should be aware of that is Stone Cold Steve Austin, huh? Cold Steve Austin, your battle for the World Wrestling Federation title against The Undertaker just moments away. And JR alluding to those five seats, the Hart Foundation will be no, in them. I don't give a damn about five empty seats because all that means is that the Hart family is going to be that much closer to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And after I whip The Undertaker's ass, I'll take all five of them and send all five of them straight back to Calgary in a bunch of wheelchairs. I don't know if The Undertaker's checked the weather lately, but I'll be damned if hell ain't about to freeze over, and that's the bottom line. Let's take a look at the Stone Cold Stunner, if you would. Steve Austin is already making his way to ringside, uh, but as you can see, his confrontation with The Undertaker two weeks ago on Raw is war. Gives him the knee to the midsection. There it is, the Stone Cold Stunner. Will The Undertaker be able to recover from that tonight if it's hit? by Stone Cold Steve Austin. You can see the taunting going on by Stone Cold. He is ready. The Undertaker did recover there. What's it gonna be like? Bam! Tombstone pile driver right there. Which move will come out on top tonight? The World Wrestling Federation title on the line. Steve Austin getting a uh, good reception here. The Texas Rattlesnake is uh, in the ring. Oh, Earl Hebner's the referee. Here we go. He was so close to getting away from Earl Hebner. So close. So, so close. Anywho, uh, Steve Austin, black tights, black boots. Stood ready in the ring, waiting for uh, the champion to come down. Austin 316 t-shirts, signs, he's definitely uh, definitely getting there in the popularity stakes. Having a conversation with Earl Hepner. Jesus Christ. And here comes the champion. Undertaker standing on the top of the ramp, getting absolutely uh, billowed in smoke as he comes down in his uh, trench coat. Been the champion obviously since uh, WrestleMania. We've seen him successfully defend the title last week against Mankind. Has he done? No, no, he hasn't defended it. Well, not on pay per view anyway. He might have done on telly or whatever, but who's he doing? Who's he doing it on the loop at this time? In fact, he's still. Uh, no. Uh, no. Trying to find your cage match. 1997. No, we went the wrong way. 96. 97. Uh, he's wrestling. He's teaming with Steve Austin against Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. Wrestled Psycho Sid on the 2nd of June. Oh, we're still in May, are we? So he's teaming with. What? He's been wrestling Vader. 
and Mankind. He teamed with Armour Johnson and Steve Austin to go against the Hart Foundation uh, last night on the 10th of May. Um, and then between here and King of the Ring, it's going to be going to be against Mankind teaming with Austin to face Owen Hart and the Bulldog. Uh, King of the Ring. Who's got King of the Ring? Oh, well, uh, Farouk and I think King of the Ring. But here come the Hart Foundation. Bret Hart in a wheelchair. Jim Lloyd Hart and uh, Brian Pillman carrying the crutches. Austin and Taker just stood in the ring watching this uh, debacle happen. Jim Lloyd Hart just threatening people with a crutch. As is, Owen, as is uh, Brian Pillman. <laughs> Davey Boy pushing Brett down the ramp, trying not to let him go. He's fooked, mate, he's fooked. Coming to ringside. I know one thing, I don't want to see, I don't want to see Gorilla Monsoon come back down here and say that these guys can't be in ringside because they paid for tickets. Which is a shame in itself. I don't know how well received the Hart Foundation's going to be sitting at ringside and Stone Cold Steve Austin is tired of waiting. So and the bell is rang away underway. Undertaker's still got his jacket and his belt on. Undertaker wearing uh, black all and one black boots. Getting pummeled by uh, Austin in the corner and around the ring. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Austin uh, stomping, a, stomping a mud hole in uh, Undertaker. Oh, head first to the top turn battle. Rock on the champion. I think Taker's still wearing a bandage from the uh, fireball from Aust from Mankind last month. Taker rams Austin head first in the top turn battle. And they're taking now of an Irish whip. Austin ducks. Austin off the ropes. No, stops. Goes outside. And grabs Owen Hart and pulls him over the guardrail. Steve Austin now clobbering Owen Hart. And the taker's finally got his belt and jacket off and he goes to the outside. Turns Austin around and rocks him with a big right hand. Now rams Austin. There's still steps. Does Taker. And Taker. Oh! Smashes Owen Hart back over the guardrail, back into his chair. Bigger right hand of Bulldog. And let him come scurrying back out and then back in the rear, out of the way. Undertaker now with Austin, rolls him back in the ring. Taker now. Going back over to the Hart Foundation. Nope, stops. Decides against it. Rolls back in the ring. Oh, but Austin with an elbow at the back of the head. And again, Austin capitalised on Undertaker being distracted slightly. Austin now stumping away on the Undertaker. Stumps and punches, stumps and punches. Nothing pretty about Steve Austin's offence, but it is effective. Irish right now by Steve Austin. Taker ducks the clothesline and a huge flying clothesline of his own. Sends down Stone Cold. Taker goes for the cover. One, two, kick out. Fast count is always below. Help now. Taker picks up Austin. Full arm and dragon twist. Is he going for the old school? Oh no, shoulder barge. Shoulder barge again by Taker. Taker still got hold of that wrist. Rams the shoulder again into Austin's shoulder. Wrist lock applied, maybe, by Taker. Good to see Hart Foundation sitting at the front row. Undertaker now going up at the top, going for the old school. Walking the ropes is Undertaker and drops across the back of Steve Austin. Taker turns around, rolls Austin over, goes for the cover. One, two, kick out. Taker now back up to his feet as is Austin. Taker grabs him, fill him, drag and twist again. Oop! Finger poke to the eye by Austin. Side to look, take down by Stone Cold. Grounding the champion down to the canvas with this chin lock of sorts. Austin 
in a predicament there. Take a rolls him over, try to get the free count. into WWF pay-per-view. It'll be interesting to hear what anybody else has to say other than you. It'll be a cold day in hell when you shut up, Ross. Thank you, King. Trying to enjoy this matchup. You see, look at these fans. I don't think they dislike... Take it back up to his feet. Austin still with the hold applied. Look, Taker trying to pick him up, but can't. Shove off by... Oh, no. Taker tried to shove him off, but Austin held onto the hair and then takes him down again. Full attempt by Taker. No. Taker keeps trying to roll uh, Austin over. Austin uh, <laughs> shouting at Hepner. Good. Taker down there. Uh, sorry, Hepner down there checking the shoulders. Why does Ross keep going? Well, he is. Oh, okay. Okay, because he keeps saying the Heart Foundation and Brian Pillman, but Brian Pillman is part of the Heart Foundation, but apparently Brian Pillman is telling JR he's not a member of the Heart Foundation. <laughs> Side headlock still applied by Austin. Take it back up to his feet. Oh, punch by Austin again. Side headlock still on the feet. Both men on the feet. Taker going to try and shove off again. Shove off. Shoulder tackle. Neither man goes anywhere. Kick by Austin. Sorry to look. Take down again by Austin. I don't know how you can become such big admirers of the Hart Foundation. I mean, he, he made you kiss your own foot, King. Let he, me tell you he, something. He, Bret Hart You're humiliated right. Bret Hart and I had big differences. We've had a world of differences. But you know what? He finally came around and saw things like I've been seeing them all along. He realized, look at these morons that he's looking at right now. He realizes he ain't going to get nothing out of these fans here in the World Wrestling Federation. They're a bunch of idiots. They're so fickle. Hey, how many weeks ago was it that they couldn't stand Stone Cold Steve Austin? Now they love him, right? Austin still with the uh, headlock applied. Taker trying to get out of his feet. Anvil shouting at security. Taker still with the side headlock applied. Taker oh, on his knees. Slowly trying to get up to his feet. Taker trying to escape. Still cinched in by Austin. Taker picks up Austin. Oh, Austin flips over. Takes out the leg of uh, the Undertaker. Austin now stomping around the leg. Got Taker in the corner. Kicking away the knee. Taker's trying to escape, but Austin's there. Attacking that left knee. Oh. Uh-oh. Taker got him with a double goozle. Launches him in the corner. Taker now, body shots, body shots, head shots, body shots, body shots, head shots. Best pure striker in the WWF. I said, fuck him off. Taker turns around and chases a Hepner out of the ring. Austin's a roll to the outside. Double leg takedown by Austin on Undertaker. Austin's got the leg, oh, wraps the leg of uh, Undertaker around the ring post and then gives Bret Hart a, uh, a salute. Austin again, third time, rams the knee of Taker into the uh, steel, steel post. Austin now pummeling away on the Undertaker, pointing the fingers at uh, Heart Foundation and Brian Pillman. <laughs> oh, Taker just rammed, uh, he just, Taker, Austin tried to ram the leg of Taker into the ring post again, but... Uh, Undertaker just pulled his legs in and rammed Bret Hart, no, rammed Steve Austin into the ring post. Single takedown now by Austin in the ring, drops the elbow across the knee. And again. Now drapes the 
foot of Taker on the bottom rope. Oh, and then drops his weight across the knee. Motivation right here. Yeah, and Austin would love to cause Undertaker to have to have some knee surgery. Take it back up to his feet just. Austin now draping the leg across the rope and then kicking the ropes. Again, pummeling that left leg of the Undertaker. Oh, take with a clobbering shot to the back of the head of Austin, though. Oh, both these men are uh, Texas, Texas natives. Obviously, Undertaker's build from uh, Death Valley, but he's originally from Texas. Went for the tombstone there, but uh, Austin got out of the back. Double leg takedown now, trying to go for an STF of sorts. Out of Memphis, every now and then you learn some of these holes. Oh, is that right? That's it. I don't care about holes, Ross. You keep running your mouth, I'll beat. Well, I would beat you up, but I got this thing about cruelty to animals. Austin still with a modified, 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 modified STF in the middle of the ring. Taking a slowly crawl to try and get to the ropes. Taker does, he doesn't have to crawl far, obviously being uh, 6'10", 6'11", he doesn't have to crawl far to get to the ropes. Austin breaks the hold. There goes to the outside, brings Taker with him, drapes him across the apron. Austin drops the elbow. And again, drops the elbow across the chest of the Undertaker. Austin rolls back inside, grabs the leg of Taker. Putting it across the rope again and drops his weight across the knee. Austin again. And oh no, Taker used his other foot and boosted it. Steve Austin over the top rope down to the outside. And they're taking that roll to the outside, grabs Austin. Take a Rams Austin into the steel steps. Hope they're trying to get both of them back in the ring. Which Taker does. Rolls Austin in and follows him inside. Stomp. By Taker. Takes a pick Taker picks up Austin. Oops, single leg takedown there by Taker now working over the left leg of Austin. Dropping the uh, 310 pounds across the knee of the challenger, or that knee braced knee. Rehabilitation was treated by Dr. Jim Andrews in Birmingham, Alabama, the noted orthopedic surgeon. And so now the Undertaker is focusing on that injured. And, and I don't know if it's 100% heel king. Well, I can tell you what. You can see by the strategy. It's both of these guys' strategy. The Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think both realize this match is not going to be over early. Austin counters out and comes back with the right hand on the Undertaker. Oh, on the Undertaker. Back down stage. Vicious stops right to the knee joint by the Undertaker. And the vaunted WWF champion going for a submission uh -oh. against Stone Cold. A half Boston crab. Will The Undertaker do what Bret Hart could not do at WrestleMania 13? And that's make Stone Cold give up. Now look at this. Now this is this is right. This is the way fans should behave. I guess, I may have been wrong. Maybe the WWF does have some of the good or some of the greatest fans on earth. Looks like they're well behaved right there. Not jumping up and down, acting like idiots. Fans have a right to do what they want to do. They can express themselves, and they also are, are pretty integral in paying our salaries. Take a ram in the knee of Austin into the canvas. Austin now rolls to the outside. Take a follows. Oh, big right hand by Taker. Taker rolls Austin back into the ring. 
Austin back up to his feet, just hobbling. Both men hobbling. Irish trip by Tager. Oh, Austin ducks the big boot. Chop block again. Tager trying to grab Austin, trying to stop him from attacking that knee, but pummeling his Austin on the knee. And, oh, stretches those hamstrings. Austin back up to his feet, grabs the angle of Tager again. Spin and toe hold. Oh, did you go for a figure four, maybe? Spin and toe hold. Austin again. Oh, with a leg lock of sorts. Oh, taking that, kicking away, though. Using his spare leg to kick away. Austin rolls to the outside. Sweeps the leg of Taker, brings Taker to the outside. No, grabs it. Oh, rams that leg across the apron, does Austin. Austin again with the leg. Rams it across the apron. Rolls back inside. Stomp to the back now by Austin. Oh, over a drop to the back of the head. Austin goes for the cover. One, two, kick out just by Taker. Austin picks up Taker by the hair. Austin go for a suplex. And, oh, heads up beautifully done by Austin. Goes for the cover. One, two, kick out. Doesn't hook the leg, man. You can hook the leg, man. Taker now with some pummeling to the back of Austin. Taker going for a suplex of his own. No, full arm dragon twist. Oh, back kick. Roofy done there by Undertaker. Grabs Austin. Full arm dragon twist again by Taker. As he goes going for old school again. Austin. Sorry, Taker on the top rope. Oh, oh Austin took the legs away. Take going down, balls first on the uh, top turnbuckle. Top rope, anyway. Austin now, big right under the head of Taker. Taker still sat on the uh, top turnbuckle. Big right hand by Austin. Austin climbing up, so you go for a super duper plex. Austin hooks the arm. Going for a super, well, a medium plex. Oh, Taker drops him down face first over on the canvas, though. Taker now oh, climbs off the ropes. Taker off the ropes. Misses an elbow. Austin goes to cover. One, two. Taker just rolls out. Good lord, that's a huge sign. Austin picks up Taker. Irish whips him. No, reverse by Taker. Sleeper! In the middle of the ring. Oh! George Acker by Austin. George Acker by Austin. Both men down. Earl Hepner with a standing count. Up to two. Three. Four. Austin trying to roll Taker over and does. One. Two. Kick out by Taker. It's a nice little match this is. Very nice. Nice to see Taker against someone... A bit different who can actually sort of uh, work, no offence to Mankind or Sid or anyone like that, but this is a, a nice back and forth match. Very even. Take a whale in the way on Austin, but Austin back with some right hands as well. Austin rammed head first into the top turnbuckle. Taking our pummeling Austin in the corner. Left and rights, left and rights. Turns his attention to Hepner. Ignore him. I know it's difficult, but ignore him. Oh, kick to the balls by Austin. Hepner getting in the face of Austin. Austin flipping Hepner off from behind. <laughs> oh, a low blow there by Undertaker right in front of Hepner. Austin trying to get Hepner over. Going, hang, he just kicked me in the fucking balls. And then 
<laughs> I'll let the flip soft stick Austin. <laughs> oh, Goozle Boy Taker, Goozle Boy Taker. Taker's got him and he choke slams him. Austin rolls to the apron. Escaping from the Taker's grasp. Obviously, the next thing Taker's going to think about is doing the tombstone. Austin's on the apron. Taker grabs him. Oh! Austin hot shots Taker across the top rope. Austin rolls back in. Kick. Stunner! Austin goes for the cover. No, he's a bit. He's woozy. Hello, someone's just rung the bell. What the hell is going on here? Someone has just rung. The, uh, Brian Pillman has just rung the bell. The match is not over. Brian Pillman has just rung the bell. Taker just sat up. Taker just sat up. Austin turns his attention away and now clobbers on Undertaker. Irish whip reversed by Undertaker. Scoops up Dave Austin. He's got him over. He's got him on his shoulder. He's got him on his shoulder. Austin's trying to fight it. Taker's got him. Taker's got him. Oh no. Austin reverses. Austin reverses. Austin reverses. Taker reverses again. Taker reverses again. And boah, tombstone pile driver by the Undertaker. Crosses the arms. One. Two. Three. Taker wins. Taker wins. And here come the Hart Foundation and Brian Pillman. Yeah. Hart Foundation are now in. They are beating the crap out of the Undertaker in the corner. Bret Hart's just sat. Bret Hart's not there though. He's still in his wheelchair. The other side of the uh, guardrail. Oh, Lepner gets thrown down to the outside. Good. Hart Foundation now pummeling away on uh, the Undertaker. Steve Austin's on the outside of the ring. He's just noticed that Bret Hart's on his own. Austin now climbs over the steel guardrail. And tips Bret Hart out of the wheelchair. Good lord. <laughs> Steve Austin's got one of Bret Hart's crutches. He comes scurrying into the ring. Undertaker's fighting back. Down goes Pillman. Down goes Neidhart. Down goes Owen. Down goes Bulldog. Oh, crutch at the back of Bulldog. Taker's got Owen by the goozle. Taker's got Owen Hart and drops him with a choke slam. While the rest of the Hart Foundation scurry up the ramp. Bulldog helping uh, Bret Hart up the up the ramp, one crutch and all. Has cost Steve Austin the WWF title. That's what I think. The winner of this bout. And still, World Wrestling Federation champion, The Undertaker! Wait a minute, wait a minute, what? Keep your eye on Austin! Austin just turned Taker around and dropped him with a Stone Cold Stunner. Undertaker is the winner, but he doesn't look like a winner here. Comes back in the ring, grabs the crutch. Chasing the Hart Foundation out of the arena. Undertaker sits up. He, he exits the ring and he goes chasing after Austin. Good lord, what a way to end a pay per view, ladies and gentlemen. That was a very good, very good match. So that's why, that's why Vince wasn't there. So who is Rose Anderson? Can we Google her? Can we Google her? She's a basketball player now. Rose Anderson, WWF. Rose Anderson. She was either a close family friend or Vince's mother-in-law, which isn't true. He attended her funeral. That's why Vince isn't there. Uh, so anyway, I was just checking news. 
Anderson. No, because you get because you get Anderson. So it looks like she's a family friend. Uh, let me just have a quick look, then we shall leave you in a second. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to have to go right to the end of this article, aren't I think? Because it's going to tell me. Uh, 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 which isn't either way, Jim was. Yes, so depending on where you look, Rose Anderson was either a close family friend or Vince McMahon's mother in law, which isn't true apparently. So, yes, yeah, she's just a family friend that has passed away. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have just watched In Your House 15 Cold Day in Hell. Like we said, next week's the last two hour one, and it's also the last In Your House show because they then turn into. So, from September, it's Ground Zero. Instead of being In Your House Ground Zero, it's Ground Zero In Your House. Anywho, I shall probably forget that, and I shall probably tell you that all again next week. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your continued support, as always. Don't forget to give the Place to Be a subscribe and a listen and a follow. There's some fine shows over there, as there is on the Place to Be, the uh, sorry, as there is on the North South Connection, the Back of Wrestling Network, as well as our little network, our old bakery productions, where you can find our old shows are just a little bit easier don't forget to give friends of the show a listen our vantage point acid wash memories greetings from around town book in the territory stick to restaurant john mcadam the outdated wrestling hour with bob smith and anything from the wrestle could be a network the fine hard-working individual that is ray russell putting out some great retro content there's obviously other places where you can get all your favorite podcasts but ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to the fine folk of Richmond, Virginia. Thank you very much to the WWF. Thank you very much to Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler. And we will leave you, as always, with a song from today in the charts. Until next time. In a way, it's all a matter of time. I will not worry for you. You'll be just fine. Take my thoughts with you And when you look behind You will surely see a face that you recognize You're not alone I'll wait till the end of time Open your mind Surely it's plain to see not alone I'll wait till the end of time for you Open your mind Surely there's time to be with me It is the distance That makes life a little hard Two minds that once were close Now so many Grow.